The United States says it will attend a meeting with Iran and Syria over Iraq. So what happened to the so-called axis of evil? Is there a change in the wind? This is Inside Story. Hello, I'm Darren Jordan. Washington is denying it's dramatically changing its policy of non-engagement with Iran and Syria. However, the security situation in Baghdad has prompted an extraordinary meeting that will have U.S. officials meeting face-to-face -face with ambassadors from Iran and Syria next month. The meeting, instigated by Baghdad, will bring together Iraq's neighbours, including Syria and Iran, as well as representatives of the five permanent UN Security Council members, the Arab League, the Organization of the Islamic Conference and Egypt. Some analysts say it's a major tactical shift in policy. The Iraq study group has hailed it as a positive development, which should not be underestimated. But the White House says its policy on Tehran remains firm. If, in fact, topics like uh, EFPs and such like come up in that conference, obviously we will address them, but there will not be bilateral talks between the United States and Iran. Uh, or the United States and Syria uh, within the context of these meetings. These are organized by the Iraqis, and these are on issues that are pertinent to Iraq. As for whether the United States has changed its policy dramatically, it has not. Well, that may change in April when another round of talks is expected to follow. This will be attended by foreign ministers from the same countries, including the U.S. Secretary of State, Condoleezza Rice. Well, joining us now from Washington is the investigative journalist Seymour Hirsch. Mr. Hirsch, thank you very much for joining us on the programme. Uh, the U.S. is denying that this meeting signals a major shift uh, in foreign policy. So how significant is this meeting and why is it happening now, do you think? Well, of course, one never really knows what's going on at the top of the American government because we just don't know. As a journalist, you don't know. Do you know, the only thing I can say is if you remember last summer there was a great, or last spring, there was a great flurry of hope and anticipation when Condoleezza Rice, our Secretary of State, announced that, uh, there, that we were going to engage in direct talks with the Iranians over their nuclear weapons program or nuclear program. They say it's not a weapons program. And of course, the condition we had for beginning those talks was quite an interesting one. We would only talk to Iran about its nuclear program and only after it stopped it. <laughs> so the issue that we wanted to discuss, we would not discuss unless they just stopped it before the meetings began. So we never got anywhere with this. So I, I'm not sure why we're going to get uh, wildly hopeful about this engagement. But it is quite confusing, isn't it? Because on the one hand, you have Dick Cheney saying that the military option is still on the table. Uh, on the other hand, the U.S. is about to engage in talks with Iran. So why the double approach, do you think? <laughs> why? Because this is a government that uh, gives a lot of different signals. The question is whether you believe Dick Cheney has a lot of influence uh, inside the government or you believe other people uh, in the State Department and elsewhere do. Um, this, but this isn't just about the Americans sitting down with the Syrians and the Iranians. This is also about the U.S. really accepting that Iran and Syria have a role to play, isn't it? Uh, you know, I can't help but be skeptical because, um, as you know, in The New Yorker, for which I write, I've been writing for two years that we have a covert operation going on inside Iran. We've, um, and as you know, I've just recently, recently written that we've escalated that program quite dramatically in the last few months. Cross-border operations, a more intensive planning for uh, military engagement, bombing, if you will. Uh, we're expanding our operations against the Shia in Lebanon and in Syria. So in, in, the, in, the, in the black world, the clandestine world, the Americans are pumping just as hard as ever uh, for the basic policy of uh, being against uh, Iran. Uh, Syria uh, and, and Lebanon. I don't see any change in that policy. It's just not a public one. Um, we'll come back to that uh, covert aspect in just a minute because much of your recent article in The New Yorker seems to suggest uh, the U.S. is strengthening its alignment with Sunni groups and Sunni countries. But much of the violence directed at U.S. troops in Iraq is by Sunni insurgents. So how do you square that circle? You can't square any of the circles of this administration's policies as we see them publicly. Uh, it's almost impossible. For example, this is an administration that began by absolutely refusing to deal with any Sunnis in, in, uh, in, uh, after, after the war, after Saddam fell in the, in the spring of 03, disbanded the Ba'ath Party, which was largely Sunni, disbanded the army, decided then to work with the Shia, and over the next three years as the insurgency grew, 
absolutely resisted any intelligence. <clears throat> this is the White House and the neoconservatives. The intelligence community was shrieking for now, almost four years now, that you're backing the wrong people. The Iranian Shia, the Iraqi Shia are close to Iran. And the White House simply believed from the very beginning that because of the terrible war between Iran and Iraq in, from 1980 to 1988, the Shias in Iraq would stay loyal to Iraq and not be more loyal to Iran. I think it's a, it's a mistake. So I, I, I don't know most of the time when I write about these guys in the White House, if they fully understand what they're doing. I don't know if they fully understand exactly what's going on. To, for example, they're also talking privately about trying to separate Iran from Syria, as if that's a possibility. They really seem to think they can do that. Okay, Seymour Hersh